Hey guys, welcome to See or Not to See. Today we're going to be talking about Rogue One. Yep, yeah. just like last year with Episode 7, we're back at it again. And let's talk about Star Wars. <laughs> so, um, were you as hyped for this movie as the last one? Um, I thought I was going to be. Uh, in the weeks leading up, I was getting more and more excited. But once I got into this movie, I'm not going to lie, I, it didn't feel the same as yeah. the hype I felt for Episode 7. Which is understandable because it was the first... Episode 7 was the first Star Wars movie we had in 10 years. Yeah. So, that's a whole other story. But, how what's your initial reaction to the movie? I was excited for this movie because I just wanted to see the old Star Wars technology on screen again. Yeah. Um, I just love that because that's something that... I think the prequels really lacked is that there wasn't you just didn't see that kind of familiar Star Wars technology until episode three and then it was nice in the newer movies that you hear okay look at you sell that's a TIE fighter that's a Star Destroyer but you know it's advanced but um, I just still have that that soft spot for like you know the old X-Wing and Star Destroyer designs sure. and everything yeah I was really looking forward to seeing this era of Star Wars in a yeah. modern in a modern sense yeah and plus we uh we never get to see the military side of Star Wars, oh, so that's yeah. what I was really excited about. I wanted to see more like a war movie. Uh, and you definitely get that. Yeah, yeah, movie. you do. It that's does feel more like positives. a war movie. Um, so, yeah, it's hard to talk about this movie without spoiling anything, so we'll try our best. But um, as far as the characters go, I liked... I like them all fine, but I can't remember yeah. any of their names. Yeah, the thing... You can generalize <laughs> the characters just by saying they were good. Yeah, like I, that feels uh, that feels like a crime for a Star Wars yeah, movie when you can't remember the, their names. Even like Attack of the Claws, I can remember people's names. The characters are one of the things that makes Star Wars truly one of the greatest movies of all time. Like, yeah, it's but, just, and I'm not saying these yeah. characters are bad. Yeah, it's, it's just like, I like the robot who I can't remember his uh, name. K two S O. K T K two S O. And yeah. let me get the uh, let me get my thing out here. And then uh, there were. Uh, the two other guys, uh, two monk guys. There's the blind guy and the other uh, guy who looked like the, I think he was looked like he was Samoan yeah. or something. The really something big, like that. big guy with the beard. So let me see here. Rogue One characters. Um. So yes, yeah, Saw Gerrera was in the was pretty good too. Forrest Whitaker's character, I, I liked him. Yeah. I only know about him though because of the Rebels TV show. I know that he was on there. Uh, let me see here. It is Chiritu Imu <laughs> is the uh, the blind man who is at one with the Force, and Bayes Malbus is the other guy that follows him around. I like them. Um, they were actually pop, pop, yeah. they were definitely my favorite two characters. I yeah. felt the most chemistry between the two. Yeah, that was the thing. Like I did feel like that they had a legitimate friendship and everything, <clears throat> but I didn't feel like I could get to know these characters enough because like I know like the first Star Wars movie kind of just threw us in there. Like here's these characters and everything, but here's the difference. Uh, I'm not giving any, anything away because I didn't think a lot of people expected this. A lot of people knew it was going to have it. There was no opening crawl with this movie. Yeah, and I think that's what the old Star Wars movie had going for it is that. Yeah, we didn't we didn't really introduce these characters that much in the movie, but we threw you in there because we told you everything that was going on in the opening crawl, and I feel like that really kind of hurt this movie by not having that. Yeah, as far as the so. opening crawl goes, I didn't think I was gonna mm -hmm. mind it up until the movie started. Where yeah, when, when they, when, 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 they when, gave when, us a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and then just dropped us right in. I was like, yeah, okay, that didn't feel right. And then they, and then they just they rubbed yeah. salt in the wound a little bit. Yeah, because the, then they present like the title. They, they present the title. Mm -hmm. It is the cheapest looking title I've ever seen in a this in this magnitude of a movie. Yeah, it was pretty bad. No, it, it really just looked like something you just busted out on your PC or just threw in there as an amateur title. I was, yeah, it's like, like why? <laughs> um, the villain was a pretty big letdown. I thought he was pretty lame. Uh, Krennic. Krennic. Yeah, I didn't and. I, I'll, uh, should we save that my big complaint about the villain, about who I think should have been for this review or spoiler review? Uh, no, I think we can talk about the villain. Yeah. I think that this was probably the biggest missed opportunity in any Star Wars movie that I think that it would have been just perfect if they did this. Um, 
I think it would have made the movie more memorable rather than just having it be the. Because when you get down to it, this is a filler movie. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. I think it would have elevated it way more to that and pleased a lot more fans. Where I think a lot of people would not have been complaining about it, and that is, I think Thrawn should have been the villain. If you don't know who Admiral Thrawn is, he was a character that really made the EU, I think, popular, uh, the original extended universe, because he first appeared in the books Heir to the Empire, which were the original books that took place after Return of the Jedi, and he was, like, he was the admiral, the commander of the Imperial Navy. Like, Vader had Vader's fist, but the rest of it was under Thrawn's control, and he was, like, this master um, strategist and everything, like, kind of like Khan from Star Trek, Mm -hmm. you know? It's kind of like he just had, like, this real mental... Like, one step ahead of you, and I think, like, the creator of uh, of the character, he also created Mara Jade, uh, said that, like, his version of the, Thrawn's version of the Empire is not like Palpatine's, where, like, he's really fearful, fear-mongering or whatever, and doesn't have xenophobia. Like, he's very logical, very strategic, and, you know, just an all-around cool character, and I thought, like, if they could have got, like, Benedict Cumberbatch to play him, since, like, Disney's what already got that. him for Doctor Strange... That would have been amazing. Like, I think this movie, just on its own, like, I wouldn't even wanted to see anybody else. I just would have wanted to see Thrawn. Oh, uh, who played director Krennic? It was... Let me see who it is. I've never seen him before, actually. Yeah, neither. I had, I've never seen him in any other film. <laughs> director Krennic. Ben Medelson, it looks like. They don't... They don't finish his name on the thing, but yeah. Okay. He did a good job. Yeah, as, as far as his performance goes... That's what he had to do. It yeah, was he good. Did a good job. My, only, yeah. my thing... I, from what I expected... From him as a character, I really didn't get because what I saw in the trailer, they made him this very menacing, very exact word. Yeah, it was a very menacing looking character, and then just his personality was very different from what I expected. He was he came across weaker than I expected him to come across. Yeah, and just kind of, and not just not he, he didn't have that yeah. menacing feeling that I was yeah. expecting. Everybody gave a good performance in this movie, though. Nobody gave oh, a yeah, bad performance. Yeah, no bad performances. Uh, Forrest Whitaker was a little bit awkward at some points, but I still I still really liked him. I think Forrest Whitaker is an underrated actor. As oh, man. for sure. I think that he's a really good actor, and I really, uh, you know... I th- we got to see, like, I kind of wish we could have got a little bit more of him in the movie uh, than what we got. And as far as... Uh, might as well, we talk, should talk about Jen or so. Yeah, Felicity Jones. Yeah, she, she did a good job. She did a good job. They, uh, they cut a lot of her cringeworthy <laughs> scenes that we saw in the trailers out of the movie, which was nice. Yeah, um, that was nice. Uh, her character got better and better as the movie went along. Yeah, she she opens up. You know, like, yeah. that that speaks for the entire movie, though. Like, yeah. the movie starts out... I didn't... was Could not get invested in, like... Because it just... It felt very poorly edited and put together. Like, the first... Act. It, felt, it felt like it was almost going yeah. through the motions of your stereotypical... Oh, I, it I, felt I, like you are watching Suicide Squad. Yeah, let's, all right, let's introduce this character. Yeah. Then this character, then this character. Let's yeah. go to this planet. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. Like, it could have benefited from an opening crawl and cut a lot of that in half. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, you get to the middle of the movie, and it was okay. You know, it was just meh. And then you get to the, like the third act, and it was amazing. It, it that was. made the entire movie worth it. I thought it would made the rest of the movie look terrible because <laughs> it was just that good. I th- was invested in the characters. I just... I, I enjoyed it so much. Um, I finally got to see what we came for was the uh, uh, boots in the ground battle scene. Yeah, just, you know, all that. It was just... It was great. Um, and you could really... You could tell that Gareth Edwards directed this. And I do really like Gareth Edwards. I think he did a great job on the Godzilla movie. Yeah, I really has, enjoyed that. It has its problems. But you can tell, like... He can't... He doesn't seem to start off his movies very well. But... And mm-hmm. though it was in the middle of his movies are kind of boring and just men. He suffers from pacing issues. Yeah, but he can... Boy, can he close out a movie. Because Godzilla was amazing when that yes, movie... When we got to the third act, that movie was amazing. And for this movie, same thing. Like, you can tell, like, it's just, oh, this, nah, okay, and then straight up just, you know, amazing. Yeah. Um, you, there's a lot of great stuff. Um, I think that they kind of went overboard with the fan service in this movie. We don't want to get anything away with yeah. that. They kind of blew, they kind of blew it with that. I think that they, they put too much in. Mm-hmm. But it still was nice to pick apart all these little Easter eggs. It feels like yeah. they're running out of things to make yeah to make I mean, an it's Easter egg or fan. It adds a little fun to the movie, but yeah. So, but sometimes like I think they went a little bit too far in a couple scenarios. Like we won't talk about it here, but like I feel like the fan service went a little bit too far that it kind of shot the movie and the movie kind of shot itself in the foot with that. Because you think about like okay, they showed these people, but 
that kind of doesn't make sense to where they were in the next movie. Yeah, we, that's something yeah. we thought about later on. Yeah, we kind of think about like, wait a minute, but it still was fun to get these to get these things. And the effects in the movie were just great. Yeah, it looked like we were watching. I think they were better than the Force Awakens. You know, a lot of practical effects, a good meld between the two, um, great battles. I think so. This is probably the best Star Wars, best looking Star Wars movie. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. I would, for sure. Yeah, I think this is what the movie has going for it. Like, if you want to see a gritty war like Star Wars movie, you're gonna get it here. This to me is the best looking Star Wars movie we've ever gotten. I think the main difference between this movie and Episode Seven. This one feels like a blockbuster movie. Like yeah, it's just a regular kind of summer movie. Yeah, it's not an event. And yeah. That's something that I did want to talk about real quick is that I think Star Wars is being milked and I just, like, I'm not complaining because so far we haven't gotten anything bad. Oh, yeah. You know, if we were yeah. getting, like, prequels again like that, yeah. I would, um, I would be really pissed off. Yeah. Like, did, like, overall, did I really enjoy this movie? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But I just, like, the way I felt going in, I didn't have that same yeah. excitement this I was, felt for episode This seven. felt like Jurassic... Yeah, I know. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but this felt kind of like Jurassic World to me. Like, yeah. there was a lot of fan service moments for the people that really, like, you know, that like, love the originals and that are going to see that, like, oh, there's that, there's that, there's that. And then the last act of the movie, they just turn it up to 100, and it's just amazing. And it kind of overshadows the rest of the movie. makes it like, the whole movie is worth seeing just for the end. I agree yeah. with your thought. I agree with... Jurassic World to me was in terms of a movie I really didn't I did not like Jurassic World yeah. very much at all it so. wasn't on the level of this movie we'll no. say that like this movie this was way movie, better than Jurassic yeah, World yeah this movie was a much better movie but yeah. in terms of your point yeah, yeah it's it, one of the it's a yeah. fan service movie yeah. like even more so than The Force Awakens was yeah um, but this was you know we got to see some great characters as we've seen in the trailer that Darth Vader was in it uh, we won't give away how much he's in the movie um it might surprise some people how much he is. It might, you know, some other people might say, like, oh, I expected him to be in the movie this much. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. The only thing I want to say is, manage your expectations. If you've, read, yeah. if you've read reviews for this movie, manage your expectations. You're going to have people out there saying, the next strikes back, better than episode no, seven. not at all. Um, uh, it's a very good movie. Just... No, like, no. <laughs> like, just don't say that. Like, some people I notice that are acting like it's way worse than it actually is. It's not. Some people no, it's not like it's way better than it actually is. It's not. Um, it's it's good. Yeah, it's, 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 good. it's just a like, good movie. It's, yeah. It's not, it's not, like, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yeah. It's not one of the best. It's not, it's not going to make my, like, favorite, it's not going to be my favorite Star Wars movie. Oh, no, <laughs> no. Like, I'll definitely watch this just for, like... As a fun way to connect three and three and four. That's my favorite thing about it. It, it, it just adds more to the story. That's, yeah, that's especially because like I think that the era between three and four gets ignored a lot until just recently. Yeah. People like there's two eras of Star Wars I think that just get ignored to the point where I kind of got irritated. Is that the period between one and two, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, which mm -hmm. the movies aren't that great. Yeah, we know, but. I always wondered like what happened in between then to make Anakin such a little bitch, and then <laughs> the Arab is between um, three and four. I always thought got really ignored, and then I think Empire at War expanded on that a little bit. The video game, and that's one thing is that this movie does make Star Wars Battlefront Two the video game campaign. It makes it non-canon anymore. Yeah, it's true. So, you pointed that out. <laughs> yeah, which was which was disappointing, but still though, like it. It was great to see like how they kind of connected the dots and everything. It, it's fun to see. Yeah. You know, but as far as the future of Star Wars goes, like I just don't want them to milk it. Like I don't want to see Han Solo movie. Yeah, really I'm not looking for. I never thought say it's about a Star Wars movie, but I'm just not looking forward yeah, to that movie. Yeah, I'm not interested. Like a movie that is uh, like about Vader's, like a Darth Vader movie about like Vader's fist, <laughs> where they call it like I. Yeah. <laughs> I know that name kind of sounds <laughs> kind of funny now that I now yeah. that I have a. Mind in the gutter. When I was a little kid, I always thought that sounded so intimidating. Like it's Vader's fist. Yeah, that's the army of the, you know. But like now, it's like yeah, I get. But like I would like to see a movie like that. Like where there he's like roaming the galaxy, hunting down, be rising to power. Like um, between three and four, that'd be okay. Yeah, I mean, regardless of whether the Han Solo movie's good or bad, it's just. It doesn't need to exist. It doesn't need. It doesn't need to happen. I would. Do and if you're gonna bring Lando Calrissian back, bring him back in the next movies. I want to see Billy D. Crystal or Billy D. Williams. It's a Billy D. Crystal. Billy D. Williams <laughs> come back. I want to see him play Lando Calrissian again. I, w I, I wish. Yeah, I wish Billy D. Williams would come back, especially when, since we got the death of Han Solo. Now. Yeah. They're probably gonna have some sort of ceremony. I would assume at some point, in episode seven. Yeah. Uh, episode eight. 
and I would love to see Billy Dee Williams make an appearance. So yeah, that, yeah. It would only make it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, it would. But uh, I think we should wrap this up so we can get on a spoiler talk and talk about the stuff that we liked and didn't like about the movie and go into that in more detail. So um, I definitely give it a 2C um, because, you know, it's a fun Star Wars movie, you know. Yeah, for sure. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it about an 8, 8.5 maybe. Yeah, I'd give it probably a 7.5 actually. Yeah. But I would say that just see it if you're a Star Wars fan. Oh, yeah. Like if you're not, like this isn't going to, if you're not a Star Wars fan... Uh, this isn't the movie to see that's going to win you over. You'll, I would you'll say. enjoy the action. But yeah. I would say as a casual fan, like you, you should like it just fine too. Yeah, you know, it's, sure. it's, it's got It's got something for everybody. It's got action. It's got a lot of great callbacks to the originals. It's just a good movie. It's not... Yeah. No, nothing, just, nothing groundbreaking. Just a, yeah. it's a good, it's a good solid movie to go see. That's what you. That's what I think people really need to realize is that this isn't the big event Star Wars. Which unfortunately, I don't want that to go away because Star Wars been an, has been annualized. Mm -hmm. Like you know, but yeah, yeah, just hopefully when Episode Eight comes around, we have that feeling back. Yeah, I just really wanted to see Thrawn in this movie, and that's what I think would have like, made this movie just just a just a, a mention at least. Like, cause Thrawn is one of my favorite characters. We're like, all oh, like. Darth Vader saying just like a tell Admiral Thrawn to ready the Imperial Navy or something like that would have been awesome but it's what we got it's good yeah it's good yeah, it's movie. good so um, that's it as always if you like what you see uh, go ahead and hit subscribe you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter the links are in the description below and uh, you can follow Joseph over here at Hoop Studio I'll put the link in the description below for that and uh, thanks for watching thanks a lot.